Hi everyone. Um, my, uh, my name is Tian Yi Gao, uh, a master student from the University of Edinburgh. I'm here to present my recent work done with my supervisor, Michio Honda. Where's, where's, where are you? Oh, here, he's my supervisor. <laughs> 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 so, yes, the top topic of our work is HOMA layer security, which is, i.e. HOMA iOS, which is tunneling messages through secure segments upon the HOMA, which already presented by John Otterstrahl. Um So I think you guys have some sense about HOMA already. So the, the, there are two main motivations for our work. The first one is that uh, I think um, encryption is essential even for data centers because there are many, many third party entities included in our networks like hardwares from some companies uh, and uh, some hardware and the network itself on the end-to-end in, in -end passes. So let, let, let me show a uh, data center networking stack which some of you may already seen before, which is presented six years ago from NetDev 1.2 uh, by Tom Herbert. As, as you can see, as, as you can see here, there are uh, three, three main components in the kernel which are doing the data center networking stack. The, the, top, the top one is the application send, send or receive messages over KCM sockets to uh, make the, to preserve the messages with boundaries. So, and then there is a encryption layer, which is done by KTLS on TCP to provide uh, secured communication. And the, there is also DC TCP, data center TCP to do some congestion control. And uh, this all three things, brings the data center networking stack uh, six years ago. And uh, there is also maybe um, NIC offloading like uh, TSO, uh, TCP segmentation offloading and checksum offloading uh, here. But uh, after six years ago, we need to rethink this because you see there are three things and it's way, way too complicated. And we found uh, there's a new proposed Transport protocol called Homa, you already know, which already done the the message API. It have uh, already have a RPC like message boundary preserved API, and also a very good fine grant um, data center congestion control, which which is uh, receiver based. But uh, there is one less part one part that is still missing. I think uh, John also mentioned about the encryption thing. So, uh, so we, we, that's, that's the problem we need, maybe need to think about, which is how to get HOMA encrypted. And that's our work, HOMA S. Uh, before that, let me emphasize the uh, importance of encryption in transport again. So there are four main points. The first one is um, we need ubiquitous, uh, it provides ubiquitous encryption, meaning that the application don't need to concern about anything about encryption, decryption, so it can just send raw data to, to, someone, to the kernel, the kernel will uh, magically do everything for you, but to provide uh, secured communication. See, and it's also a bit uh, um, error prone that the applications do their own encryption and decryption stacks. And uh, I think many of you have heard things like Heartbleed, some, something like that. Uh, and the second benefit is that we can do the encryption until down to the time of uh, segmentation. This brings some advantage at uh, data locality and uh, this also brings up the third point here, which is opportunistic hardware offload. So as we know, there are already uh, TSO, TCP segmentation offloading, 
but uh, maybe we can also bring this encryption and decryption to the NIC. I, I, actually, TCP already done this. I think, um, I think uh, someone who have made this work is also here, uh, De Boris. Um, and uh, so the last, the final point is that for the internal users, internal users, it's uh, uh, they, they are, uh, it's efficient if there is already an internal encryption engine for them to use. It's so they don't need to move data back to user space and uh, encrypt and then send it back again. So um, let's see how how we did this. How we make the HOMA encrypted by firstly looking at how actual HOMA packet looks like, which is that's something something details that John didn't mention. Uh, so we can see here in in the the uh, from the top the IPv4 header uh, the protocol number is not TCP obviously. So it's currently set to 140, which is uh, which I think it may be changed for in future because this number is already taken by other protocols. Um, and uh, then there is a, a basic TCP common header follows. So the most of this common header is empty, but except for the protocol numbers, and the data offset that represents the length of TCP options that can carry many parts of the uh, HOMA headers. Then we can see the data header of the HOMA, which is actually at the place of uh, um, TCP options space. So, uh, uh, and it includes RPC ID and uh, the the whole whole length of the uh, HOMA message. So the head, its header is copied to all packets um, after. Uh, let me let me switch to next slide. I think so. You can you can see here there are segment headers and application data which can fit into every MTO set MSS. So for for so that if the receiver don't even support GRO, it can um, it can still order the packets. So, uh, but uh, uh, and this is the packets after TSO. You can see IPv4 header and common header and data header are preserved, and uh, each segmentation header and application up, up data are put into each real packet. And uh, uh, how, so this leads to a question. Um, based on this, how we can encrypt data uh, HOMA segments? The one clear option is use the T T KTLS offloading, um, specifically, which is the, uh, the NIC, NIC and TLS offloading, which already there at uh, some latest uh, Mellanox NICs. And also, in, in terms of kernel, it's a TLS device mode in KTLS. So to, to, to let this NIC to perform both segmentation and encryption, which also means uh, TSO offloading and the TLS offloading at the same time, but for HOMA. So, um, we, we, so in, to make this thing work, we, we have two, two points here. Uh, to test, to to show whether this thing will ho work. The first one is that we need to make some packets that um, TCP-like, but not actually using the TCP protocol number at the IP layer. And and also um, after after encryption, the TCP option space have to be preserved. As we can see here, the data header, uh, oh, see, yes, the data header of HOMA actually over, overlays the, uh, the place of TCP header. So we have a 
test uh, that uh, we have found Mellanox Connect X6 Nix uh, can do this. And uh, unfortunately, we've also found the Chelsea T6 uh, will discard the TCP options. We will set the protocol number to a number other than TCP protocol number. Then let's see a bit details. So the TCP uploading works on Mellanox Connect X6 Nix. And uh, uh, here is our ex experiment. So we have made an app that just uh, generate, um, ju just to generate the TCP, uh, just a random TCP app, but and also set the set sock up for the t kernel TLS. Then we let the we in the driver we will re rewrite the protocol number of TCP to Homa. And uh, now the GSO segment resembles a HOMA GSO segment. We monitored that uh, uh, resulting packets in the NIC in another machine. So we, we just uh, observed the packets coming from that uh, Mellanox NIC. And we, we, uh, we see that it works perfect for, uh, uh, there are two commands in the Mellanox NIC, one is for for both uh, TLS offloading, one is for non-TSO and one for TSO. We suck. We 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 find that uh, uh, TSO with TLS um, it's uh, working. It's just working perfectly, even for protocol num packet with protocol number that's other from TCP. So, but uh, for non-TSO, we found that uh, uh, the the T the in the in the in the driver of that nick the T, tx commands needs a, a a small patch to to calculate to let the to do the right calculations which first is layer three and layer two headers but it's it's easy to fix isn't it so we we have already fixed it and make it working for both non tso and tso to work as uh, to to make Homa do some, we we already show that it can work. And as, and now, as we already know how um, hardware will do things, we have proposed this uh, Homa LS, which closely integrates Homa with TLS. As you can see, with our Homa LS, it uh, unifies the whole three parts, uh, including message API encryption and the transport. Protocol, and uh, and in this way we can we can make use of the NIC offloading not only um, TSO but also TLS offloading. And uh, let's see what the modifications are done upon Homa. So the first goal is to resemble TLS GSO segment into to the NIC, except the this. Uh, Protocol number in the network layer header, and uh, let let's talk up talk look up up to this picture. We keep this uh, Homa common header and uh, data header unencrypted, but, uh, so it's uh, this uh, common header and the data header is like just uh, it uh, takes the same space as the TCP header and the TCP option space. Then. In the in the Homa segmentation header and actual payload, we we put a TLS header before the segmentation header and a TLS auth tag also max um, after the whole segmentation, whole whole GSO segmentation. And for now, because because up the, the segmentation. So for Homa, it uses segmentation headers to sorting the packets from a disordering. But uh, uh, as as we already uh, encrypt the all data from TLS TLS header record header to TLS MAC, so we can no longer see that um, message offset and length in this segment header um, before decrypted. 
So we have we need to find a way to do this. Uh, we originally thought that uh, maybe we can make uh, uh, we can because the TCP sequence number field in Homa now is still empty, and we originally thought that will work, but uh, we have met some problems on that. So we currently switched to, we found that uh, after uh, Homa TLSO, the Melanox Nix will uh, set an incremental IP ID. So we currently use that for, IP, for reassembling. However, uh, IPv6 don't even have an IP ID. So we will need to find another way, uh, or maybe we will try to conquer this and make TCP sec sequence number work. And finally, since TCP, uh, since TLS operates in per flow basis, so uh, home iOS sockets manage, uh, have to manage per client session keys. Those keys are registered by the application, much like, much or less like T KTLS. In other, in another, in another word, it's like T KTLS. The uh, the TLS key are exchanged by the applications, not by our kernel module. And uh, uh, here is a more detailed explanation. So we see that it's uh, like like uh, KTLS. It also use set sock opt to register the key, and uh, it doesn't handle the um, TLS handshakes, but uh, it's also, un unlike KTLS, we didn't use uh, upper layer protocol ULP. We, uh, instead, we integrated the KTLS, uh, our HOMA LS into HOMA very closely. And, uh, and also, when for HOMA LS, when we call set stock opt, the struct also includes a, a remote address and a port because HOMA socket it itself is one to many, but we need a, a HOMA LS context for each um, for tuple. And uh, our current implementation, implementation includes around 800 lines of code, and uh, uh, it's pure software, um, but the performance is actually quite good. I will show you later. So, and uh, the hardware offloading one, I'm still working on it. And this is the performance of our current software-based Homa OS. Um, we measured the average round trip time for this message size. So um, the, the message smaller and smaller and equal than 1,389 are uh, only one packet with no TSO. And uh, this 4K one is uh, TSO, um, and uh, and uh, we have witnessed that uh, we have achieved um, uh, uh, 17 to 21 shorter round trip time than, KT than TCP with KTLS. And even actually, if you look at this, uh, the smaller packets, which is on um, which uh, one smaller than 4K, actually the the Homa OS with uh, Homa with encryption is only brings for for example five microseconds overhead for encryption compared to raw TCP, and this much uh, the perform the um, evaluation is done on the cloud lab with uh, these machines, and uh, let's let me summarize my presentation. We present this Homa OS and its first result as we discussed in the middle of presentation, we are confident that we can use T, uh, uh, sand side TLS offloading uh, even, um, even with uh, hardware offloading, but somehow we are not sure about the receiving side for uh, hardware offloading. Uh, nevertheless, we are in, we, we, uh, we, um, we are interested in testing more NICs for this KTLS behavior to uh, to seek that whether Homa LS will work um, to prevent uh, something like a vendor lock and uh, many very recent or upcoming NICs, including Natronome NFP three thousand eight hundred 
or Intel's, Intel IPOs seems also will support that. But uh, uh, I have to say, the chip shortage recently is really making us very hard to get these uh, dick devices. If any of you can, can help, <laughs> yes, <laughs> let, let, let us know. Uh, finally, we are also thinking about the use of PSP instead of KTLs. We also consider that as an option. And uh, we, I, I, we hope that uh, uh, the actual PSP implementation will become available re re relatively soon so we can uh, decide which to choose eventually. And uh, um, it, it, it may make messages reassembly of Home iOS easier. But at the same time, we're also interested in the availability of the hardware offloading too. Uh, and uh, that's all for my today's presentation. And it's actually my first ever one. Yes, uh, thank you everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, please ask me questions if you have any. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Uh, I have one question actually, uh, because you show you encryption here, HOMA RS encryption performance is better than the TCP one, right? Not, yeah. not t better than TCP, better than TCP, uh, yeah, TCP KTLS. RS, yeah, TCP uh, RS. So my question uh, will be, which specific HOMA feature you believe lead to this? Because for encryption, definitely you need in order, right? So out of order, that kind of feature, not really beneficial to this. So which specific HOMA features, you believe, can you know, give you better encryption you know, performance? Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I, I, I would say, uh, so you are asking that, uh, um, see, you, you are see, saying that uh, uh, the HOMA IS vs. KT, TCP KTS is bring, bring HOMA even more advantage Com compared to HOMA vs TCP, am I correct? No, no, I, I just say because HOMA LS gain better uh, result, right, for encryption, but because of the encryption basically that's common, I believe, between the HOMA LS or TCP LS, right? TCP KT LS, I believe that's encryption part of work is will be common, but uh, I believe some part of the HOMA's feature will beneficial, you know, in encryption work, right? Uh, exactly the way that, that John explained yeah, in yeah. the previous presentation. Yeah, yeah. So the, even for single packet transmission, in the very, very simple case, but the HOMA has a much lower software overhead. Yeah, right? I know, right? just as which specific one. For example, if that's shorter uh, processing first, or you know, you know no, which process- that's a single outage in run trip time measurement, so the, it doesn't matter whether, you know, uh, the, the head, it doesn't involve any head of line blocking avoidance. But for the transmission path, it's much simpler than that of TCP with HOMA. You mean, but, but I, I don't think, transmission uh, yeah, we can do so this. TCP yeah. has, so, you know, to uh, the you know, send buffer of the TCP, for example, it looks like a stream already, right? But the TCP transmission path or transmit SKB or something, it then contains a lot of some packetization features. And that part is quite expensive. Okay. But the Homer doesn't have you know such complicated thing. I mean, there's a little bit of complexity, but they're not that complicated compared to so, TCP. Okay, okay. We can let's this let's yeah. take this offline. Yeah. If there are any other questions, let's address them, or we can move on to our next talk. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, let's give him another applause. We end the session here. Yeah.